Hey everyone, this is Nick DiRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about how to add internal randomness to an existing Excel model. This is part of our lecture series on probabilistic modeling. So we've covered what internal randomness is, basically just including some kind of random component in your model. And now we're looking at how we can apply that within an existing model. So in this video, we're going to be looking at adding it to the dynamic salary retirement model in Excel. And in the next video, we're going to do the same thing with the Python version of the dynamic salary retirement model. So let's go ahead and jump over to that model so we can start adding this. So what we're going to add here is uh, that each year we currently, uh, you know, save a certain fixed amount and we, uh, invest that at a fixed amount, a fixed rate as well. And that happens every year, but that's not very realistic. Some years there's going to be recessions. Some years there's going to be expansion periods in the economy. And so we can expect different interest rates to prevail over time each year. And same thing for the savings rate. Uh, and so that's what we're going to build in here is each year it's going to randomly choose whether we're in a recession, normal, or expansion economy. And that randomness is going to be based on probabilities, which we're going to add as inputs to the model. So the first thing we want to do is add those additional inputs. So I'm going to move these outputs down uh, so that we have additional room to add the inputs. And then I'm going to go and start adding inputs. So um, we're now going to have economic condition inputs. Um, and that's going to be the economic probabilities. And so we have three states of the economy, recession, normal, and expansion. And we only have to define two of those probabilities because uh, the rest is just going to be one minus the others. The normal uh, economic chance is going to be one minus the recession and expansion chances. So let's just start with 20% recession, 30% expansion. And now we have our probabilities set up. So the next is that we have a single savings rate and interest rate here, which is for the entire model. But now we're going to have different savings and interest rates depending on the economic condition. Uh, so I'm just going to cut all of this to make some additional space. Um, and then I'm going to have the economic condition. And then I'm going to have the interest rate for that economic condition and the savings rate for the same. So then we're going to have recession, uh, normal, and expansion come here. So just so that nothing in the model breaks while we're moving things around, I'm going to also uh, cut this savings rate to the normal savings rate and cut this interest rate to the normal interest rate. And that way, because I use cut rather than copy or just moving in some other way, everything still stays linked to that. You can see now it's going to C11, uh, which is correct for the savings rate. So now we want to add in the additional inputs of the recession and expansion interest and savings rates. So let's put 3% in recession, 6% uh, in expansion. And we'll put, say this is someone who's not financially constrained, they're going to be um, not spending as much in the recession. And so they're going to save more. And of course, you would want to reformat this so that all these inputs are neatly contained in there, but I will skip that in this video for the sake of time. The complete example with all formatting is there on the course site. So 
Now that we have our inputs set up, we want to go ahead and bring those over to the Wealth tab where we're doing our calculations with the savings and the wealth. So now we're no longer just going to have this single normal, uh, single interest rate and savings rate. Now we're going to have all three of those depending on the economic conditions. And we need to build out the table that we can use in Excel to pick a random discrete variable because we're picking between these three different economic states. Uh, there's three possible values for that input, recession, normal, or expansion, and so that's a discrete variable. So in order to build that out, in Excel, um, so we're going to have the economic condition and we're going to have the probability uh, and we can reference a couple of these from here, uh, the recession and 20%, expansion and 30%. I'm just gonna cut that down so that we then have normal and this is going to be one minus the other two probabilities. And I can format these all as a percentage. So in order to pick our random discrete variables, we need to create the cumulative probability. So that's just going to be the cumulative sum of the probabilities, sum from the first cell to ex itself fixing the first part of that range, but not the second. So we reach 100% by the end. Um, and then we also need to go ahead and bring the other inputs over to here. So now I am going to go ahead and break this part of the model um, because it's going to have to be reworked anyway. So I delete those, and of course now nothing works. Um, and I'm going to bring this whole thing down, cut it down a few cells to make some extra space. And I'm going to reference over all the relevant inputs. So the economic condition, um, normal recession expansion, and get the interest rate and savings rate for both of those. So we're picking year over year, every year, whether we're in a recession, normal, or expansion economy. Um, so we want to go ahead and insert um, some additional uh, columns here because now we're going to need to uh, have a few extra calculations, one to draw the probability, one to pick the economic case based off that probability, and then an additional two to grab each of the inputs, which are corresponding to that economic case. So now I've made enough space. Um, so we're going to have the from probability, uh, the economic case, the interest rate, and the savings rate. Um, and so for the drawn probability, as we've seen previously on how to draw random discrete variables, we're just going to use the RAND uh, function, which is going to give us a random number between 0 and 1. And then we want to pick the economic case based upon that probability. So if the drawn probability is, um, yeah, if the drawn probability is um, less than 20%, then 
we're going to um, get the recession case. Otherwise, we're going to do another check if the drawn probability is less than the normal cumulative probability, then it's going to be the expansion case or normal case. And otherwise, it's going to be the expansion case. And then before we finish up with this formula, let's carefully review and adjust the fixed references because ultimately um, we want to set this up so that as we drag it over, it's able to pull the interest rate and the savings rate um, based off that drawn probability as well. Um, so for the drawn probability, we're going to want to have that fixed on the column, but not fixed on the row. So um, that the dollar sign comes before the letter then, fixed on the dollar, or fixed on the column, not on the row. Uh, both of these cumulative probabilities totally fixed. We don't want them to move. And then uh, each of these, we don't want them to go up or down, but we do want them to go to the right. And so they're going to be fixed on the row, but not on the column. Um, so again, fixed on the row, not on the column. So then I should be able to drag over and see the um, corresponding uh, interest rate and savings rate, and then complete this all the way down. And now we see that um, when it's a low probability, we're getting recession. When it's high, we're getting expansion. When it's middle, we're getting normal. And we are getting indeed the inputs which correspond to the expansion, recession, and normal case as well. So everything we've done so far is working appropriately. So now that's the discrete random variable part of this. Now we just need to reintegrate that into the model. So this right now is doing the current salary times what was originally a single savings rate. Now it's going to be the savings rate given in the row. Um, so now the savings is working again. And then Initial wealth is just what you saved, but after that, you're going to be investing that prior wealth at the interest rate. Uh, here it was just using a singular interest rate, and now it's going to be the interest rate given in the row. So also make that adjustment and carry that through. And then we have it using the recession normal or expansion interest rate and savings rate. And when we come back, over to the entire model. We can see that everything is flowing through properly. The retirement tab is all still working. Uh, salary and the input, final inputs and outputs. Um, and now we can see that if we recalculate the model, then we get some different uh, values of the results now that it is a internal randomness model. With any internal randomness model, you're going to get a different result each time that you run the model, even with the same inputs. And of course, this was a fairly um, lengthy process to rework this section of the model to add this in. Generally, if you're gonna go with internal randomness, you should decide that from the beginning so that you don't have to rework these portions of the model. And oftentimes, if you already have the model built, then you can use Monte Carlo simulation as another way to add randomness to your model without having to change the internal workings of it. But that's a quick uh, run through of how we can add internal randomness to an existing Excel model. So thanks for listening and see you next time.